on the day of Arafah, which is the ninth day of the Hijjah, the Prophet والسلام, gave a concise speech and it didn't take more than 10 minutes, even less. Yet, it contained so much knowledge that if the Muslims were ever to implement it, they would lead the whole world once again. The earlier generations followed it and they led the world. And this is what was known as the golden era of the Muslims and of Islam. And maybe they called it in Europe the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages. But to us, it was the golden times because the Muslims followed what the Prophet taught them, alayhi salatu wasalam, word for word. This is not the addressing the state of the union for an hour filled with rubbish. This is what cements the ground for an everlasting civilization. We don't have the time to go through it, though it's quite short, but the messages, the messages are so profound. In the beginning, the Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam, O people, your blood, your wealth, and your honor are sacred to you as the sanctity of this day, the day of Arafah, in this month, the, day, the month of the Hijjah, in this land of yours, which is the sacred holy shrines. Now, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, began his address, began his speech by warning the people that they do, not, they do not have the right to harm others, to take their wealth or to tarnish their reputation. And he made this so clear that he compared doing this to violating the sanctity of the sanctuary of the haram in the holy month and the sacred month of the Hijjah, in that holy day of Arafah, which is a Eid for the Muslims, as Umar ibn Khattab said, may Allah be pleased with him. So why aren't Muslims following this? Why do we see this chaos, this carnage, the killing, the bloodshed, because those who are involved in such actions are not real, true Muslims. Simply because they're not abiding by the Quran and the Sunnah. Yet the West, the disbelievers, the other denominations are trying to label Islam of being violent, where it's in black and white. This is the address, the oration, of the Prophet ﷺ to the whole Ummah, not to violate such sanctioned things, such things of importance, no bloodshed, no taking people's wealth, and no tarnishing their reputation. This is the understanding of security, that you feel secure when you are around Muslims. And this is what all expats acknowledge when they come to Muslim countries. They say, we feel safe. Even if we leave our things, most likely nothing will happen to it. We will come back and find it where we had left it. And this is a glimpse of the traces of the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. Then the Prophet ﷺ moves on to canceling calls of pre-Islamic era. And these 
calls that may go against Sharia, may go against the teachings of Islam, anything that goes against the Quran and the Sunnah, the Prophet says, Alayhi it is under my feet. It's all abolished. It's all canceled. Anything that was pre-Islamic and goes against Islam and the Sharia, ah, it's completely abolished. And he gave an example of blood feuds, which were prevalent at the time. So if someone kills someone, the tribe of the victim will kill two or more of the murderer's tribe, not the murderer, innocent people. And in retaliation, they would kill five, and they will kill 10, and they will keep on fighting. The Prophet said, all of this was abolished, alayhi salatu wasalam. It's all canceled underneath and beneath his feet. And likewise, anyone who comes nowadays to call the Muslims for similar feuds, whether he's calling others for communism, socialism, or being liberal, or being a, a, a capitalist, any calls that goes, any calls that go against Islam, such as the call of equality, feminism, liberty, all of this is against Islam. Not that Islam opposes freedom, no. But what kind of freedom are you hinting? Oh, the freedom for a man to walk naked or a woman to take off her hijab. This is not freedom. This is transgression against Islam, against the teachings and the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is abolished and canceled and underneath the feet of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Democracy stating that we rule by the people by the people. This is all abolished. There is only one that rules, and that is the rule of Sharia, ah, the rule of Quran and Sunnah, not the whims and desires of humans who change and flip every single minute. Also, the blood feuds, the errors of others, the mistakes of others. Allah says, and no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another. So we can't blame others for things that they have not committed, let alone prosecute them and carry the sentence upon them. The Prophet Furthermore, goes on in, in his short, concise speech to abolish riba, to abolish usury. And he tells us that this is one of the major sins in Islam. And when we look and reflect 15 centuries ago, what kind of riba was there? I'll give you a loan of a thousand, you return them eleven hundred. Very simple, very easy. Look what this had grown into nowadays. You have institutions that facilitate riba, mandates riba in slaves, countries, and individuals through RIVA, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, enslaves countries for billions and billions, not of loans, rather of interest, compound interest. The countries have paid the original loan years and decades ago, but they keep on milking them in a recent form of colonism. 
and everybody is working hard to pay off such a debt and they keep on growing richer and richer and looking for other countries to colonize and to enslave. People nowadays work more than their ability to pay off their mortgages, to pay off, off their loans they got for buying a car or a property or the furniture or to finance their summer vacation. Everybody lives on credit cards and they pay compound interests. Something that the Prophet warned against Alayhi Salam 15 centuries ago. And the Muslims don't pay attention to the curse that Allah has placed on the people who take riba and give interest in riba and witness this contract writing and those who write and keep the books. They're all in the curse of Allah alike. No one has the upper hand over the other. They're all equal. Then the Prophet ﷺ reminds us by saying, Fear Allah. In what? The Prophet says, ﷺ, Fear Allah concerning women. So the Prophet ﷺ is instructing us and telling us to fear Allah the Almighty when it comes to women affair. In the past, women were a symbol to all evil, betrayal, and shame. Women used to be nothing. Allah Azza wa Jal honored women. Allah made her a mother, a sister, a daughter, and a wife. Allah secured her financial needs and gave her the freedom of choice. No one on earth can get her married to someone she doesn't want. But at the same time, she cannot marry someone her guardian does not approve of. Why have a guardian? Because this is how Allah created women. They, he created them to be submissive to men. That they could never be guardians over men. Women can never be rulers. They can never rule or control. But this is how Allah made man, uh, man and woman. And Allah Azza wa Jal did not order women to provide for men, but rather the opposite. Men provide for women. Men deal with women by honoring them by loving them, by caring them. They're prohibited from smacking their faces or leaving a mark on their bodies. Islam prohibits men to starve their wives or not clothe them or not shelter them. This is a man's responsibility. What we hear nowadays calls for empowerment of women. Feminists calling women to go on the rampage to rebel. What we see in the kafir and the disbelieving world from things getting out of proportion, this is what Islam prohibits. And this is what Allah Azza wa Jal orders us to protect our women folk and to order them to abide by the hijab for their own goodness and for the community's goodness. Allah says, do not display yourselves as was, as was the display of the former times of ignorance. Time does not permit us to go on, but there are so much to be learnt from this small, concise speech of the Prophet, which I encourage myself and you to go over and over again to study it and to implement what's in it.